itu. Hey, aloha, and welcome to another exciting, exceedingly exciting episode of Stan the Energy Man here, coming to you live again from the beautiful, beautiful God's country of Kailua, Hawaii, on the windward side of Oahu. And uh, again, I'll, I'll let everybody know that just in case you hear roosters or chickens or dogs, sorry, that's as quiet as I can get them, and so far they're behaving pretty good, so we should be okay. Um, I'd like to reach back and, and talk a little bit about some of the stuff we've talked about the last couple of weeks, um, including uh, what I'm doing to uh, um, kind of while away the time here and, and kind of get used to my self-quarantining, if you will, um, minimal travel, minimum contact outside. And uh, I think we have an image of, um, of my mask that I, I've been wearing. I actually take this out and wear it uh, all the time. Uh, it was, I bought it at our hardware store. It's actually meant to just kind of help you keep uh, dust and stuff out, but it does two things for me. Um, I can double it up. So it's actually pretty sheer. So I, I wouldn't want to cough straight through it. I'm sure some stuff could get through it, but it does help. Uh, if, if I try to touch my face, I realize when I have the mask on that, that I shouldn't be touching my face. So when I put my hand up anywhere near my nose or my eyes or whatever, I automatically hit the mask first and I realize if I'm going to scratch my eye or, or scratch my nose or something that I should be doing it through the mask so I don't transfer stuff to me. And if I do cough or sneeze, I still cough into my arm or my elbow and uh, and don't just count on the mask to keep it from spreading. So um, good to do whatever you can. And uh, here in Hawaii, you have to go outside with a mask. At least they want you to. And so we're doing that. Another thing I was doing was this week I started working on a uh, an electrolyzer and uh, this is a pretty cool setup that I've uh, kind of worked on. I did a preliminary design a couple of years ago, but I wanted to do a new one where I could actually change out the electrodes on them. And for the electrode, I use uh, stainless steel wool, which is uh, generally sold in hardware stores for scrubbing pots and pans. So you can get electrolyzer or electrodes for your little little um, electrolyzer. At the bargain basement price of about probably 25 or 30 cents per electrode uh and that with a little copper wire and you're ready to go so once i get that thing finished up i'll probably uh charge it up with some electrolyte and show you folks and explain how it works and show you how easy it is to make hydrogen right in your own house and uh and it actually separates hydrogen and oxygen so the hydrogen that you get is relatively pure and um should be pretty safe compared to if you just make hydrogen, what they call hydroxide, uh, out of a out of an open container with um, electrolyte and two electrodes, you actually get a flammable and potentially explosive mixture of hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, uh, which could be pretty exciting if you're not careful with it. So um, I'll show you that sometime uh, soon. Another thing I'd like to mention is that um, when I left the employment of the state of Hawaii, uh, I changed my email address and a lot of the folks that I invited to shows uh, to be on the show um, haven't been responding to my emails because my new personal email doesn't say Stan in the in the uh, address line. So I actually went to Gmail and put up a, a new email address, uh, stan.energy.man at gmail.com. And so if you want to get a hold of me, if you want to be a guest on my show, if you have a, a hydrogen product or an energy product um, and I can schedule you, uh, or if you have a question, uh, feel free to send it to either Think Tech Hawaii or to um, that email, stand.energy.man at gmail.com. And I'll be glad to answer it. I just set it up just for the show here so uh, I can keep people connected uh, via that email to the show. So today's show is actually uh, international again. Um, I get a lot of great um, data from a lot of different locations. And um, the one that I really found most helpful is from the California Fuel Cells Partnership and Keith Malone, who I've had on the show several times. But I just got his newsletter about two weeks ago. 
and we were kind of in the throes of the coronavirus and I was traveling from the big island to here. So I didn't, I didn't want to do the show on those topics then, but I'm going to do them today. And, and it's just really little new snippets from around the world. And I'm going to start off with uh, one, uh, one of the guests that I plan to have on the show here in the not too distant future is a, a guy named Joel, Joe Pratt, who used to be a, a PhD at Sandia National Labs. And I worked with him on several hydrogen projects, uh, particularly maritime projects. Uh, and when he was out in Hawaii, we, we worked closely together. We, we helped give him some hydrogen for one of the projects he was working on out of our HCAT um, station. Um, but he's working on a great uh, project that I'm really looking forward to seeing um, commissioned and getting on the on the water, as it were, because he's he's working maritime hydrogen and. He's working with a bunch of uh, really great partners, uh, national labs and uh, public-private partnership sort of, sort of scenario to build a ferry that will pass uh, shuttle passengers in the San Francisco Bay. Um, the project is called Water Go Round. And uh, I did contact him last week and I'll have him on the show in a couple weeks, but um, there was an article talking about how that um, project is being worked and it's a little bit behind schedule, but uh, mostly from permitting and issues like that. Um, but they're working on it, and they expect to be launching it sometime later this year, uh, at the very latest, early next year sometime. So we'll we'll talk to you about that when I can get a hold of Joe and everything's worked out. We pr probably have a launch time or a christening time for it. Another story comes out of uh, back actually the Pacific region. Um, I've told you before that Australia, back in 2018 or 20, early 2019, um, actually started developing a policy, a national policy, to become a hydrogen economy. And what they've done is they've actually started to do massive hydrogen production, and they're trying to do green hydrogen production, which means making hydrogen using electrolysis and some kind of natural um, energy source like solar or wind or geothermal or um, hydroelectric to use the electricity from those generation sources to make clean uh, carbon-free hydrogen and then what they do is they uh, either sell that hydrogen as a gas uh, or as ammonia uh, most people don't realize this but Ammonia is basically one nitrogen atom and three hydrogen atoms. It's an H3. And that's really easy to transport, relatively speaking, because it's a known commodity that already has safety uh, protocols set up for it and everything. Um, and has a safety record of being shipped on rail cars and ships and things like that. And it gives you a lot of hydrogen in a form that's easy to transport, relatively speaking, uh, compared to liquid hydrogen, which would be have to be carried in very, very specially built ships with cryo containers they call doers. And um, uh, the uh, ammonia can be, can be shipped fairly easily. Well, it turns out that Australia, once they announced that they were gonna be doing this, uh, Russia of all places decided they were gonna compete with Australia for the Japanese market. So it tells you a couple things. Number one, Australia is number one, really smart for doing this. Number two, uh, there's a definite market in Japan and it got the attention of number three, uh, the Russians who have already been in the natural gas business. And uh, I have some more stories later on that talk about the, the connection between natural gas and hydrogen. And they want to make sure that they're part of the hydrogen game. So again, as I talked about a couple of weeks ago in the National Security Show, now, we need to be careful that Hawaii, that uh, the United States doesn't get too far behind uh, a lot of uh, the other countries in Europe and uh, particularly China, uh, Korea, Japan, and Russia uh, when it comes to hydrogen because we're losing market share every day that goes by and we really should be focusing on how we can be a market leader in hydrogen. Uh, for example, one of the next uh, stories I have is from... Uh, Japan, it's Mitsubishi um, Heavy Industries is uh, going in to produce uh, fuel cell trucks for one thing. And um, they're looking at uh, producing a kind of a mid-sized truck and using it in the Japanese market. And that ties to some other stories I've got coming up. Another big story is uh, DHL, the big uh, international air freight company, uh, is very bullish on hydrogen and published five reasons 
why they are bullish on hydrogen. And they're basically, uh, because of the range on the transportation side, the safety, they point out how much uh, hydrogen has been used in the space uh, industry and space travel and the safety record that it has. Um, it's zero carbon and also it's very easy to store. So besides the decarbonization and the clean energy stuff, the safety aspect um, and an application for transportation. And again, as I say, in transportation, your fuel is weight and weight is everything in transportation. So if you can have a lighter fuel and get good energy uh, density out of it, you're way ahead. Hydrogen has the best energy density on the planet. Um, next, Cummins Diesel uh, announced a few weeks ago that Cummins Diesel bought out Hydrogenics in Canada, which is a big uh, fuel cell producer. Uh, they've also apparently started working with a uh, company called Loop Energy, and they are really starting to step out in hydrogen fuel cell transportation. And that says a lot when a big diesel company starts looking at hydrogen and says they they want to start incorporating it into their, their works. The Netherlands has really stepped out along with several European countries on hydrogen. Um, I think I've, I've told you before that um, one of the first uh, Kawasaki built um, liquid hydrogen ships will be delivered to the Netherlands and Kawasaki Heavy Industries is building that ship for the Netherlands. They're going to replace their coal power plants with hydrogen um, fuel cells at the gigawatt scale. And they'll be producing electricity at their on their outer islands and taking down the uh, coal plants that currently produce their electricity. And they're using surplus North uh, Sea wind, which is apparently pretty prevalent. Um, and they're using that to make clean hydrogen and sending it out to their outlying islands. Also, the European Union has stepped up um, hydrogen adoption, and uh, Germany. Uh, along with Portugal, have planned to plans to expand their pipelines, and I'm, I'm hoping that they're actually start constructing pipelines with um, reinforced fiber tubing, which is um, going to be much much uh, better for hydrogen um, uh, transporting than traditional metal pipelines. They're number one; they can hold higher pressures, and number two. You don't have the embrittlements issues that you do with um, some of the steel pipelines or the pipelines that they don't know what the actual components are in the steel pro in the steel pipes themselves. Some of them are so old and they can't sort they can't figure where they were sourced from, so they don't know if they're heavy in iron content or if they're heavy in nickel content. They they don't know, so they should be looking at um, using. Um, the uh, fiber reinforced pipelines for transportation pipelines um, and not just transportation. Um, again, North Sea wind is being turned into hydrogen and several countries in several articles that I've gotten have been talking about how the um, hydrogen is being infused in the natural gas pipelines to boost the energy content of natural gas for um, their turbines that they use to produce electricity. So number one, you start off with fairly clean natural gas, which is much cleaner to burn than carbon, other carbon-based fuels like oil and uh, coal, um, because it's it's just a cleaner source of uh, of energy. And then you boost it with hydrogen, and you get a much cleaner um, source than just the natural gas itself. Then what you can also do is you can strip that uh, hydrogen off because it's lighter than the other gases. You can actually separate it out fairly simply and then use that hydrogen for your transportation sector. You can pressurize it and start putting it into vehicles. So Europe's starting to step out in this. Germany and Portugal are taking the lead on it right now. And um, it's, it's pretty exciting news. Toyota and a company called Hino are really starting to step up to make what we call class eight trucks, which are your big. 18 wheelers and your large uh, platform trucks. Um, they see a big market for it. I'm sure they're looking at Cummins Diesel and they're looking at, um, at uh, Nikola Motors and some of the things that are happening across the world. And they realize that um, some smart people are connecting the dots with hydrogen and long range heavy haul transportation and realizing that 
If you're going to clean up uh, heavy transportation, it's got to go electric. And if it's going to be electric, you're not going to be able to use batteries on those big trucks because the batteries will weigh more than the freight that you're, you're hauling. So basically, you'll just be driving around hauling batteries instead of hauling freight. So uh, fuel cells are definitely going to be impacting the uh, heavy truck market. So I've got a bunch more stories, and uh, I'll get to those, but to give my voice a break and to give you a insight into what else is going on at ThinkTech, we're going to take a 60-second break here, and I'll see you in, in a minute. Aloha, I'm Kili'i Akina, the host of Hawaii Together on the ThinkTech Hawaii Broadcast Network. Hawaii Together deals with the problems we face in paradise and looks for solutions, whether it's with the economy, the government, or society. We're streamed live on ThinkTech biweekly at 2 p.m. on Mondays. I want to thank you so much for watching. We look forward to seeing you. Again, I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. Uh, next story up was a story from Australia. Queensland University in Australia is um, studying uh, hard on um, ways to increase capacity with clean hydrogen, like I say, using um, renewable energy sources to electrolyze hydrogen. And uh, that's one of their big university systems. And uh, uh, right here in Hawaii, I'm actually talking with some other folks to uh, parties in Australia about doing projects here in Hawaii where our universities can can collaborate and um, work on some actual projects together to expand hydrogen transportation. So I'm hoping I can uh, release one of those stories to you here in the not too distant future. As uh, many of you have probably heard, um, the Summer Olympics this year have been postponed for a year. Um, what you may not have heard is that they, the Japan plan to showcase hydrogen in this year's Olympics. And uh, from my perspective, postponing it for a year due to the coronavirus is actually gonna help to showcase hydrogen even better because in, in the next year, Japan will be able to capitalize off of a lot of really advanced hydrogen work that's been going on recently, but would be rushing to make this summer. But by next summer, they should actually be able to do some really amazing things with hydrogen. And um, I'm looking forward to that. Hot on the heels of Japan, China's hosting the Winter Olympics in 2022. And they have already announced that they will be showcasing hydrogen in a lot of the venues uh, around the Olympics, including a lot of the transportation. In fact, um, there was another story I'm trying to see. Oh, yeah, um, China's purchased 2,500 hydrogen fuel cell buses um for their bigger cities because they they pollute their cities are so polluted with industrial pollution that they're doing everything they can to reduce that pollution and um china's stepping out in public transportation big time with hydrogen fuel cell buses um it's it's amazing to see that a lot of these stories start to connect the dots on renewable energy and clean electricity and hydrogen it, it's like you know I, I guess as a military guy i can tell you that conceptually you can think of how to do something when you're writing up your war plans or something you you get a bunch of smart people in the room and they all talk about what if this and what if that you kind of come close but until the reality hits of uh, what it really takes to make all this stuff happen you really don't have a good handle on it. And what I'm seeing is, uh, from that perspective, is that a lot of the countries have said to themselves, hey, if I'm gonna use renewable solar and wind and things like that to replace all of the, the sources of fossil fuel and nuclear power that we use right now to make electricity, I have to be able to store energy. 
So their immediate thought is, we'll do it with batteries, except for a couple major problems. Number one, the best battery technology we have right now is really expensive. And if we went to try and source all the materials to turn the entire world into lithium cobalt technology batteries, we would basically be out of materials before we even got started. We couldn't even make a dent in transportation, let alone the grid, with batteries. So people are starting to wise up to the fact that hydrogen fuel cells and hydrogen energy storage are so much cheaper, so much more dependable, so much safer than these massive uh, lithium cobalt technologies. And it, it's amazing. I just see all over the world, people are just coming up with these, uh, hey, the light bulb's coming on. We need to look at hydrogen. And that's great because hydrogen dovetails well between the grid and transportation. Like I've been telling people for years, you have to realize that transportation is going to become electric. And that means the grid and the roadway are going to start joining in how they work. And the hydrogen piece is that connection. And if you don't see it now, you'll start seeing it in the next few years as hydrogen fuel cells and hydrogen vehicles become more ubiquitous and used all around the world. Right now, you'll see a lot of them in Korea. You'll see a lot in Japan and in California. Pretty soon, you'll start seeing more and more in the in the Northeast, in the Northeast quarter where um, those folks are starting to, to really move out in hydrogen fuel cell. You'll certainly see them here in Hawaii because we're stepping out a lot, uh, especially on the Big Island with hydrogen fuel cell transportation and hopefully on the grid as well. But it does my heart good. Um, one big company, uh, an engineering company in the European Union called MAN, M-A-N, all caps, um, they are pushing the European governments to start forming policies that uh, basically encourage the utilities, electric utilities, to start understanding how to apply hydrogen in their turbines to mix with natural gas and burn in their turbines to make electricity cleaner than with uh, other fossil fuels or just natural gas alone. And some of these big companies like Mitsubishi and General Electric, they're starting to look at how they can transition these new turbines that use a mixture of hydrogen and natural gas to run completely off hydrogen. And if that's the case, then you could start transitioning your electric grid to using natural gas and renewables, and at some point be able to go from renewables right to pure hydrogen to run your turbines and not have stranded assets like big generators that can't do anything because they can't burn hydrogen. These natural gas turbines are being built with the end state being they can burn pure hydrogen as their fuel. And that's a game changer for the electric grids. Um, a company or a, an institution called Woods and McKenzie estimates that there will be 9 million, that's with an M, fuel cell electric vehicles in the not too distant future. Backing up that is that uh, Honda, Hyundai, Toyota already have production vehicles. Um, production trucks are coming online. Class 8 trucks are coming online. A lot of municipalities, particularly in California, are using hydrogen fuel cell buses in their system. You got to get the clue. It's happening, folks. Um, another great thing for the industry is that um, the Department of Energy stepped out in what they called um, scaling uh, hydrogen, H hydrogen scaling or uh, hydrogen at scale. And in other words, getting hydrogen to large scale gigawatt level applications and in transportation, really uh, pushing the, the limits. And they've put two of their national labs, Pacific Northwest National Lab and Sandy National Lab, um, to the test of taking materials, like I, I talked about the fiber reinforced tubing and things like that, and really testing all kinds of materials uh, so that they know how hydrogen reacts to rubbers and vinyls and plastics and metals so that better compressors can be made and better electrolyzers can be made and better storage tanks can be made and things like that. So the uh, Department, of, U.S. Department of Energy is uh, actually stepping ahead and really trying to work hard 
to get hydrogen at scale, lar much larger scale. And they're using their national labs to help do that. Um, my last big story is BMW. BMW, um, you know, I, I don't know if you're a car enthusiast or not, but I've always really admired BMW, even though I've owned more Mini Coopers and I've never owned a BMW. Um, I've actually owned five Mini Coopers, believe it or not, and they're now made by BMW. Um, but I've driven BMWs when I was in the military in Europe, and uh, I've always been a big BMW fan, but they just announced recently that by 2022, they will have a production X5, which is their SUV, that'll be hydrogen fuel cell powered. So for the those of you that are naysayers and think that hydrogen is still just a pipe dream down the road, never happened, not going to work, uh, BMW doesn't think so. They're making the X5 in 2022. And uh, if you're in California, I'm sure you'll be able to get it in California. I'm hoping that by 2022, here in Hawaii, will have enough hydrogen stations that uh, all of the car manufacturers can deliver cars to their dealerships here that can uh, run on hydrogen. I'm just really looking forward to it. So let me uh, close by saying there's a couple of companies or a couple of institutions out there that really uh, are worth paying attention to. And if you can, uh, you should try and look them up and do some homework online, especially if you're stuck at home and uh, can't get out and you're self-quarantining and you got to have a cool mask like mine to go anywhere and you you just kind of want to, you're, or you're old like me, like I'm 66 and I'm not supposed to go outside because I'm, I'm a high risk category. And although I don't have any underlying health conditions other than being old and senile, um, but some of these institutions are really doing great work. And I'm going to start with the uh, California Fuel Cell Partnership over there and, and Keith Malone and his folks who really del deliver a great newsletter. So if you look up the California Fuel Cell Partnership, sign up for the newsletter, you'll get the latest and greatest on what's going on in the hydrogen world. My next big shout out goes to the Hydrogen Council. Um, I was fortunate um, in 2017 to be at their second meeting in New York. Uh, they met there at the same time the, the UN Security Council was meeting and was invited to participate in some of their activities. And um, at that time, they had started off with maybe 16 or 17 fairly large companies uh, to promote hydrogen at scale with the Department of Energy. They're up to 81 companies. And we're not talking little companies. We're talking Shell Oil, Total Oil, Air Liquide, Air Gas. Uh, you know, Honda, Toyota, um, Kawasaki, um, Hyundai. I mean, just big, big, big companies that are doing great work. Fuel cell companies, uh, um, Plug Power, um, Hydrogenics. They're all part of this uh, consortium, basically what it is. And they are doing an outstanding job of accelerating the technology and the awareness of hydrogen in the industries and they're growing leaps and bounds. So if you haven't bought hydrogen in stock in some hydrogen company, eh, start looking at it, start following them and jump on that. So you'll probably make some money. Um, I guess they can't be too specific without getting arrested, arrested by the, the trade commission, but um, look at uh, some of the companies that are in that hydrogen uh, council and uh, you'd be surprised. Also, the Renewable Hydrogen Alliance sends out a nice newsletter and keeps people up in form. So look up the hydrogen, the Renewable Hydrogen Alliance and see if you can grab their newsletter. And also there's a zero emissions bus conference scheduled for the 16th to 18th of uh, September in Denver. So you might want to look that one up. And if you're not doing anything in September, maybe that's something you can jump in on and do. So I think that's going to do it for Stand Energy Man this week. and. Uh, I'm going to try and line up a guest for you so you don't have to listen to me drone on too long. And uh, next week, we'll, we'll try and get you a great guest. So aloha from uh, Kailua, Hawaii. And be safe. Wear your mask. Don't touch your face and wash your hands. Aloha.